Our final talk of this session is Alessandro Balocino. Are you there? Deep Space Communication and Navigation <coughs> Services. I am. You hear me okay? Yes. All okay, yours. Great. Throwing directly to you. Okay, just to say. Okay, great. Uh, so, um, hello everybody. My, uh, my name is Alessandro Balocino and uh, I'm going to talk about uh, what we are doing here in, uh, in Argotech uh, for what concerns the implementation of uh, deep space uh, communication and uh, navigation services using Microsoft Lights. So uh, I'll start very, with a very quick introduction of uh, Argotech. So we are an aerospace uh, company based in Turin, Italy, and we have a few branches around Europe to support ESA and as well as subsidiary in the US. And we work mainly on two pillars. Uh, one is the development of innovative products for the wellness of astronauts, and the other one is uh, uh, small satellites that can work in deep space. Uh, we work with all the major uh, space agency and the uh, customers from space and as well from uh, other industries. So, as I said before, uh, one of um, the key areas of our business is uh, our small satellites. And we have developed our own proprietary platform that can be easily scalable from 6 to 27U. And uh, it has been selected twice for uh, working in deep space on two NASA's missions. And we have developed all the key elements, uh, all the key subsystems for the satellites. So currently we are on board of two missions. Uh, one is our PEMIS-1 and the other one is DART. And uh, in both cases, there is a cooperation between NASA and the Italian Space Agency, so we're gonna have uh, two satellites uh, operating in deep space uh, this year. Um, so why, why I'm talking here today? So as you can see, uh, as you guys know, um, one of the biggest challenges when working in deep space and uh, exploring or exploiting the, the solar system is establishing a solid communication network and uh, as well as navigating. And uh, we truly believe that the utilization of small satellites uh, can help building the services for uh, these two aspects. And um, obviously uh, having small platforms in particular, uh, Microsoft's uh, as a sole pros such as the flexibility and the reduced cost uh, with the reference to traditional approach. Um, but there are a number of challenges that uh, shall be taken in account, such as the limited mass uh, and uh, in general system budgets available, and as well the reliability. Um, so to uh, help uh, uh, having a sustainable exploitation of the solar systems, we are working on three areas. So the first one is development of constellation of microsats to provide communication and navigation services to the moon and Mars. The second area is the development of user terminals for deep space communication. And the third area is the development of new technologies to improve uh, uh, navigation in deep space. So I'll start talking uh, about the moon. Um, as you certainly know, uh, there is a huge interest uh, in the moon. There are tens of mission plans in the next 10 years. But one of the bot main bottlenecks that we see is the uh, establishing of the communication link. So as of now, there is just a partial coverage of the lunar surface, surface and it's not possible to communicate 24 seven, in particular with some key areas such as the South Pole. And generally speaking, a, a small uh, spacecraft don't have a very high data rate to, to communicate back with Earth. So what we are doing is developing a system called Andromeda, whose uh, core is a constellation of microsatellites orbit the moon on four different orbits. And we are studying an end-to-end -end, uh, telecommunication system that can be a turnkey system for uh, commercial and uh, institutional users on the moon. So that the, the goal is providing a sustainable ac access for, to the moon and by making it easier the communication uh, with, uh, with the Earth. So uh, the key features of the system is that uh, we are planning to communicate in S and K band, and we are developing a system that is uh, fully compatible with uh, the roadmaps that have been defined by the main space agency, and we are targeting a performance, uh, a communication speed up to tens of Mbps. And we are currently working very hard to be there in a rather, in a very short time frame. So we are, uh, 
targeting the to have the first uh, uh, satellites to make demonstration of the services as soon as 2024. And uh, the full constellation uh, will be composed of 24 satellites, uh, and uh, each um, each one will have a uh, target mass of uh, 55 kilograms. Uh, we are applying also the same concept to Mars. In particular, we are working uh, on a study sponsored by the European Space Agency uh, with the, that has the goal of implementing a communication and navigation infrastructure at Mars uh, using micro, micro satellites. In this case, uh, the, some technical solutions are different, but uh, the main concept is the same. And uh, in this case, we are targeting uh, um, a speed of uh, 9 Mbps from Mars at uh, 1.5 AU. And uh, the system will be equipped with uh, some uh, navigation accuracy as well. So that the goal is having uh, uh, an accuracy better than 10 meters. Um, in this case, we are doing uh, the study for ESA and uh, we will also breadboard some key technologies uh, in order to start the risk in some key um, areas that shall be developed. And in particular, the study will be completed uh, this year. So we will complete all the analysis and uh, as well the demonstration of uh, uh, some key technology. In synergy uh, with what we are doing from these two main activities, we are also starting developing some hardware. So what we are doing is developing a deep space uh, radio uh, for a small spacecraft that is uh, fully compatible with the constellation I have just shown. So it's going to work in the S band and K band, and it's uh, it will have some very good uh, performance in terms of uh, communication speed, and it's going to be fully compliant with the CCSDS and the Luna Net architecture. And we are also uh, planning to include some uh, automatic uh, link setup and link negotiation, so that the system can get uh, uh, as close as possible to what we have here on Earth, where the user is not required to make very complex uh, communication setup when using uh, a cell phone or something like that. Uh, also in this case, we already started working on this activity and we will reach uh, TRL7 in uh, 2022. Uh, the last area on which we're working is the development of new technologies. So in particular, we are starting working on uh, navigation uh, for uh, scenarios in which a GNSS-like approach is not feasible. Uh, so we have uh, this uh, new project that we are just starting that uh, will make autonomous orbit determination of a constellations by, constellation by means of analysis of the intersatellite link signal. And uh, also in this case, we are targeting to have uh, a rather good uh, performance in terms of accuracy, so a position better than one meter and uh, 0 0.1 millimeter per second for um, as a, a position between different nodes. And in this case, the TRL is a bit lower, but we will reach uh, TRL 4 in uh, 2024. So to summarize, I've, I've gone very quickly through a number of different uh, projects that we are working on. But the main uh, idea is that uh, the exploitation of the solar system of the resources will need some uh, new uh, telecommunication and navigation systems because the infrastructure and services that we have now are not sufficient for uh, working uh, for exploiting the deep space. And uh, uh, we truly believe that uh, u utilizing uh, microsatellites can uh, offer a lot of potential in terms of uh, development speed and cost. And we are actively working on different areas for making this possible. And we are targeting to have the first solution in space uh, in this area in 2024. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much indeed, Alessandro.